Amen. Amen. Come on, give God a hand. Clap of praise. Children, I'm excited that this has been a morning. If I could take time and just tell you, you wouldn't understand still. This has been a morning. It's been a night and a morning. Amen. But in God. In God. In everything that we do, in God. In God. It's going to be all right. Amen. All right, Satan has his vices and his schemes and his schisms. Ain't that right? Amen. To alter when God really got something for you to say. I'm going to tell you, just right off the bat, the ministry is not an easy thing. Amen. Because we still wrestle in the flesh. Amen. Even though in the spirit we've committed our life to do God and be God and just surrender all to his will and ministry. Trying to walk in this life and live this life and stay focused in this life. Come on now, I'm going to tell you Amen. the truth. Amen. The devil is cunning. But God. but God. Amen. Because I can say, but God. But God. I can hold my head up. But God. But God. But God. But God. But God. Had an awesome travel this week, visiting with my dad, and I just enjoyed myself. I had a wonderful time with my family and my sisters and everybody. Uh, everything was pleasant. Can we just go on into the word? Amen. Oh, he is bowed. Father God, I thank you this morning. Thank you, thank, thank you for your blessings. I thank you for keeping us, God, protecting us, and, and providing for us as yes. well, God. I thank you for making us able to come into this house on this morning yes, to serve you, to praise you, to worship you. In Jesus' name, let the word go forth that's pleasing to your, to your nostrils, God. Yes, God. And that's food and edification to you, God. That's food for your pupils, God. In Jesus' name, can we say amen? Amen. Can we amen. say amen again? Amen. Just briefly, go to the book of Romans, the 8th chapter. Romans, the 8th chapter.
such as the Father and the world are opposed. That means they're opposite of each other. They're Amen. fighting with each other. Opposed, he, he, he's not He's not on one accord with him. Amen? Mm -hmm. When you get there, say amen. 1 John 2 and 15. Amen. Somebody read that for us. Love. Go ahead. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of a father is not in him. That should clearly give us understanding of why we should choose and how we should choose. Right. Amen? Amen. But it's all based on what our desire is. If you have not the desire of things of the Father, come on, if you have not desired things of heavenly order, guess what? Your choices are going to be set on things of the world. Amen. Amen. Why did he say you got to choose now? You got to choose why? Because if you choose the flesh, what did he say? It won't be according to 2 and 15. What did he say? It's not of the fathers. Ain't that right? right. Not of the it's not of the fathers. If you chose the world, then it's not of the fathers. Right. You are opposite. You have went astray. You have gone awry. Right. Amen. As the son and the devil are opposed, Matthew 4, 1 through 11, it shows us in scripture where Jesus is showing us that him and the devil are not on the same team. When he went up into the mountain after 40 day fast and he was tempted by the devil. Amen. And it showed us that everything the devil threw at him, he was challenging it. As he said, that's not my order. That's not the way I should walk. Amen. Amen. And we call ourselves Christ-like. Well, who is the Christ? Jesus came as a representative of that. So what should it say to us? In our choices, we should choose the things that Jesus chose. Ain't that right? But we're dealing with a wicked world and a cunning Satan. Amen. Amen. That's very schemeful. Amen. But as the, as the devil and Christ are opposed, so is the flesh and the spirit of Christ. So I want to focus this morning on this latter part of that. The opposed, the opposition, the conflict, the wrestling, the fighting. So is the flesh and the spirit opposed. So is the flesh and the spirit opposed. They're not going to be on one accord. They're not going to come in agreement. No. They're not going to always, they're not going to find a way into the right place. Because they're on different sides. You're either going to the east or you're going to the west. You're going north or you're going south. When we decide, we have to make a decision as to where we are going. Amen. We're in a battle. We're in a fight for our life. A fight for our families. Come on. And it's a fight that will exist as long as we have breath in our bodies. Amen? Amen. First Timothy 6 and 12. Go there. But this fight is not a simple fight. But it's easy. But you have to be trained for it. It's not a simple fight, but it's easy. But you have to be trained for it. And you have to go through the training. First Timothy 6 and 12. You have to prepare yourself for where you're going. And your walk in life really gives you the, the route for which it is that you're going to battle with. We got to go into this battle with the, with the very greatest of arms that's necessary. So I'm going to have that read it for me. 6 and 12. First Timothy. Six and twelve. Fight the good fight of faith. What? Fight the good fight of faith. Mm -hmm. This fight is not about flesh and blood. It's not about hands. It's not about uh, tangible things. It's not about the deeds that we do and the, and the things that we do. But we're going to fight what? A good, good fight, fight of, of faith. faith. A good fight of faith right. means that our faith is going to yeah. always yeah. be the forefront of what we do That's right. and how we fight. But where is your faith at? Mm. Come on, read on. Lay hold on eternal life. Yeah. That's it. What are you hoping for? You can't be hoping for just what the things that this world will give uh -huh. you. 
What am I looking forward to? What do I have my, my hope and my desires in? What am I planning on? What am I, what am I, what am I trusting God in? Amen. Go ahead, Bridget. Whereunto thou art also called mm -hmm. and has professed a good profession before many women. You call and then you open up your mouth and talk about it. No. You're not ashamed of it. No, You're not afraid. You, you witness. Everywhere you go, I'm not afraid to tell somebody about the goodness of God. This is a faith walk. This battle is not uh, today and tomorrow is over with. We can get up at 8 o'clock and go into battle with the fight and then at 10 o'clock we the one that's over with. No, this fight goes on eternally until the day of judgment when God comes back. Amen? So as long as we got breath in our body, what is our faith speaking to? Amen. Amen. When times really get hard, when trouble seems to be on every side, what is our faith speaking to? When everybody has turned their back on you, seem like you can't get nothing right, they just call you can't get right. What is our faith speaking to? When it looked good one day and the next day it started raining and pouring and thunder and lightning is everywhere around us and our life is tore up from the flow up. What is our faith? Speaking to relationships going awry. What is our faith speaking to? What are you standing for? What are you what are you surrendering yourself to? Amen? Amen. What, what are you telling God, this is me? And what are you listening to God say to you? Amen. Amen. In our faith, it has to be rooted and on our foundation of what I'm standing on. Amen? My faith. My faith. So I want to talk church. See, today I realize that I got some more dying to do. Amen. Paul said we got to die daily. 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 We got to die daily, not from the spirit, but from our flesh. Amen. I still got some dying to do. There's still some things in me that got to die out of me. Amen. 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 That means I still got to grow and become, grow beyond where I am and grow more toward where I'm hoping to get to. Amen. Amen. But that's done in my faith. Amen. It's not done, it, but now I need to put some things in order where I can line up some practices that's going to prepare me to fight and make this battle a little bit more easy for me. Amen? But at the same token, it's not done by, by my might. See, good Jesus, think about it now. He said, what greater faith than these that haven't seen, but yet still believe. They just hear the word and believe. We see things and they still don't believe. But we sometimes see things that we do believe. Amen. So we got to utilize the positives and the growth that come through us. But let us go back to understand Romans 85. Those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on what the flesh desires. See, those, the word starts with those that live. Yeah. Live means to have life. Live means to be in existence. Live means to uh, have energy and strength. And live means to be exuberant. Ain't that right? Amen. Those who live, this, this is the nature by who you are. We can tell you by who, by who you have represented yourself to be okay. in times past. Ain't that right? So we look at you and we identify with you by the way you live. Right. Ain't that right? So those who live, listen to the word, those who live, that's what the word said, those who live, they have determined this is my lifestyle. This is my lifestyle. This is my lifestyle. This is what I've determined. Those who live according to the flesh in my living, this is what I've determined. I'm going after the flesh. I'm so focused on the flesh, I can't be denied. Amen. This is what I want. This is what I'm hungry for. This is what I go out into the world to accomplish. Amen. My eyes are set on what I see in front of me. Amen. And what I can put my hands on. The word says those who live in Romans 85, those who live, live, you have set your foundation on the flesh. According to the flesh. Have their minds set. Now let's get it right now. Their mind is set. All of their thinking, their thoughts, is set on the desires oh, of oh, the flesh. Yeah. Amen? The flesh. That's what he's talking about. 
He's not talking about somebody made a mistake. Somebody did something one day, they did something another day. No, he's not talking about that person. He's talking about these people that have determined that this is my lifestyle. Amen. Amen. This is what I'm striving for. Amen. This is who I choose to be. I don't care about you. I don't care. See, in that lifestyle, there's a bit of selfishness. A lot. There's a lot of self-centeredness. Amen. There's a lot of things that makes you focus more on what you desire, you desire. And rather than what God desires for his people. Matter of fact, you think that you are God. <laughs> and everything you have done has been accomplished by you. Amen. Everything that you got has been received by you. There was no God in the middle of it other than you. It came through your connection, through the people you know, through the... I mean, through the jobs you have worked, you, can, you become satisfied that I put all my effort in it, and this is my reward. And you don't give God no no credit. This is what you've set your mind to. This is who you're set to. Amen? He said, those who live according to the flesh have set their minds on what the flesh desires. Let's be honest. What do you desire? You were trained in school that your education can get you happy. They can bring you success. You were trained going through school that if you do this, you do that, you're going to be successful. Amen? <clears throat> Where is God in our books? Where is God in our studies? Where is God in our education? He's not in it. He's above it. Amen? But do we give him prudence to that? Do we give him recognition to that? When we go in our classroom, do the, do the, do the teacher or the uh, instructor, do he open up by saying everything that's in this book is inspired by God? No. He starts giving prudence to the author. Do the author come out and tell you everything that I've written according to this study is inspired by God? No. So we have to be mindful of how we pursue what we pursue. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not talking about education is not good. Oh, it is good for us. But you know, it was some preachers in the old days that preached the word of God that preached you into heaven. Amen. Mm -hmm. And couldn't even read. Amen. <laughs> Amen. They they talked directly with God and walked with God. Amen. And they gave you the word of God. And you had students that could sit amongst them that was in the word. They could not only learn, but they could recite every scripture that the preacher was saying. Yes. And he couldn't read. Yep. They could take you in the book where he's coming from, and he's coming strictly from the word of God that's ushered in his ears. And from his meditation. Amen? Yep. But education has a place. It prepares us. Amen? We just got to be mindful of what we're allowing it to prepare us for. Amen? But you set your mind you got to be careful what you allow your mind to be set on. you got to be very careful what you allow your attitude to reflect on. And what are the things that affect you? We hear this over and over and over again in Galatians 5. It talks about the things of the flesh that we see. Adultery, fornication, amen? uncleanliness, lavishness, all of those different things that's reflected of the flesh. But the greater of those are things that are reflected of the flesh that's in the mind, that's in our attitude. I can say these things to you and you can identify with them, but then when you become envious and jealous, when you become with an attitude of somebody else or when you become judgmental, Use your Christian right to judge somebody else to belittle them and tear them down. That's worse. Yeah, That's just as worse as any of the other yeah. things of the flesh. Amen? Amen? Those things just as bad. Okay. Amen? When we use our Christian walk to tear down or destroy okay. or attempt to destroy somebody else. Mm -hmm. Amen? Okay. We are not operating according to God. Romans seven seventeen. Go there. allow ourselves to become something other than what God desires for us to be. Romans 7 and 17. It says, Now then, it is no more that I do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. We get to a state 
in our existence to where sin have taken over our minds. We get to a state in our existence where we have developed ourselves to allow sin to be the dictator or the ruler in our lives. Amen? And you're almost at a point of no return. But as long as you have breath in your body. Amen? As long as you have breath in your body. God still, still, I'm working for you. Amen. 6 and 17 says that. 18 says, For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. Recognize, people, that the flesh is not good. And that flesh I'm talking about is not just shaking your head, but in our thoughts. If we don't put God, if we don't reverence God, our thoughts will take us. I said last week, your mind will kept, your mind will cause you to lose your life. Matter of fact, your mind is easy to tell. You take your life. Things get a little hard, get a little rough. Your mind starts telling you to do something crazy to justify Amen. what you're going through. Amen. 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 And that's going to make it easy. But it's a lie. It's, a lie. it's not going to make it easy. It's going to continue to take you other than where God desires for you to be. The flesh cannot answer your pain. Uh -oh. Nor can it solve your problems. Amen. Uh -huh. Do we hear that? Do we see that? Amen. It dwelleth no good things, for to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. Why? Because in my mind, my flesh has become my God. And when I say my flesh, I'm talking about the fleshly thing. What I desire, everything that I desire has become my God. Meditate on that for a minute. What we look to, what we yearn for, what we're excited about, what we're hungry for, have become our desires, and it's not that of godliness. Appetite have grown lustful yeah. and are taking us a ride. Amen? Really taking us a ride. Romans 7 and 22. For I delight in the law of God after the end with man, but I see another law in my members, <laughs> warned against the law of my mind, yeah. and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. Yeah. The law of sin. Mm -hmm. And do we know the consequences of sin? Death. Yeah. Yeah. It's a trap, y'all. Yeah. It's a trap. For you, for me. I still need to die, son. Amen. I still need to die, Lord. So what is he saying in this verse? Those who exist. Abide, dwell, reside in those things according to the flesh are living to process the things of the world. They live in the access to things of the world. Hmm. But there were two things to this. You said one of them is by the flesh, and then the other was to live by the spirit. Amen. Can we go into the spirit, church? Yeah. I don't want to spend so much time on the flesh and not touch the spirit. So by the love of the spirit, what is it? What is the star? What are the things of the spirit? First Timothy 6 and 11. But as for you, O man of God, Flee these things, pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, steadfastness, and gentleness. Amen? As for you, O oh man, it says pursue. It's not going to just show up. You got to chase it. Just like God chasing you, we have to chase that righteousness. We have to chase that love of God. Amen? Romans 8, 11, and 12 says, 
But if the spirit of him that raised up, watch this now. Listen, this is our foundation. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead mm -hmm. dwell in you. Yeah. If it raised up Jesus from the dead and it dwell in you. If we just pause right there and say, look here, look here, look here, look here, church, look here, church. If the spirit that was able to raise Jesus from the dead is in you, pause. If it raised him from the dead and is in you, I don't even think y'all hear me. What, what can I do in you? For the spirit that raised Jesus up from the dead dwell in you. Come on. According to the scripture. For the spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwell in you. He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwell in you. Somebody read 12 for me. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. But if you live after the flesh, you shall die. Mm. But if you through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. Mm. For as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Just because that spirit that raised up Jesus dwell in us, we can declare ourselves overcomers. Oh, yeah. If you choose that spirit, amen, it's dormant inside of you. It's working inside of you. But you don't recognize and it want to do more, but we're more centered around what we see in our eyes, what we hold in our hands, and not what we dwell in in our spirit. Amen? We're more caught up in the, what we can do and not the power of what God can do. Amen? Yeah. That's why sometimes we get ourselves so down to where we can't even get up out of the bed. Because our spirit is wore out. Why? Because we're leaning on the flesh and our desires and our strength instead of leaning on the spirit of God and the faith that we have in him working in us. Amen? Yeah. Did we hear that? Oh, yeah. Come on, y'all. I like I'm about myself uh, now. Uh, uh, Amen. 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 Listen to the word now. We don't overcome by the world. Have the devil ever saved the devil? <laughs> no. Will evil ever take care of evil and make it better? No. Evil begat evil. Yeah. We don't overcome the world by the world. You can't use the world's schemes and schisms to overcome the world. Come on. You've yeah. got to grab hold of something else. If you're trying to change, you can't use the same things that got you in your situation right. to right. get you out of it. You've Come got on. to find a different road. Oh, Amen. Yeah. you got to choose a different That's route. Right. It's not going to work like Amen. that. Amen. Amen. Jesus said in John 16 and 7, But I tell you the truth. It is for your benefit. That I am going away. Why is he telling us that he's going away? Because if I go away, the advocate will, will come. If I don't go, the advocate will not come. Yeah, if I go away, the advocate will come. Yeah. But why is the advocate coming? Come because yeah. I'm sending him. Why am yeah. I sending him? So that he can reveal all truth to you. Yeah. Why should he have to reveal to you? Because I was with you. Yeah. Because you have not yet came into a full understanding of this word. You have not yet reached a level of maturity when you understand and you're going to learn from the day to the day you die. Come on. I will leave so that he can come so that he can help guide you. Yes, thank you. See, you've been looking at me yeah. and I've still fallen off course. Well, i got to put something in you that can guide you from within yeah. so that you can maneuver yourself through the courses that's on the yeah, outside yeah. dealing with the wickedness on the inside. Yeah. I got to put something in you that you will accept yeah. because you feel it, you know it, you understand yeah. it and yeah. it's a peace, it's a joy, it's a happiness, it's, it's something that makes you better than what the world expects from you. It gives you strength yeah. when you feel it bad. It gives you yeah. strength when you're going through. It gives you strength oh. when you're falling. It gives you strength yeah. when you're troubled. It gives you strength. I need it. Your mind is not at ease. Yeah. 
I go away so that I can give you something give you that you can relate to, that you can have relation with, that you can hold on to, that will hold you up. It's not built by man. It's not made by man. It's not controlled by man. It's not reverenced by man. It's only by God. Amen? I go and I may send you. And I may send you something that will convict you when you're going astray. Amen? Because it's not your life. It's just something you're doing. You haven't decided that this is the way you're going to live. You're experimenting. God is telling you, I'm going to convict your heart because this is not what I called you. I have called you. I have chosen you. Amen? Come on, somebody. Quit letting the world make you feel like you're out of order. When really the world is trying to get you out of order. Trying to take you away from the hands that have already called you. Go to Romans 8. Round about 38. John 14 and 6 says, And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate mm -hmm. to be with you forever. Thank you. It's not going anywhere, y'all. Thank you. It's not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. well, Romans 8 and 16 says, The Spirit himself testifies yes. with our spirit that we are God's children. Yes. Amen? The spirit that's in you connects with the spirit of God yeah. and it recognizes you to be more than what you even say you are, what you think you are. The spirit speaks to a reverence of you that you don't even speak to yourself. In your doubt, your spirit is battling with your doubt. In your quick spirit, your spirit is battling with your quick spirit. In your hate, your spirit is battling. I'm talking about the real you. Come on there. Not that made up you. Come on. Not that one that everybody see on the outside that's pretending to be somebody else. Come on. We complicating somebody else's lifestyle instead of living the way God has called us to live. Come on, man. You better say it. Amen. The spirit of God. Amen. Look at the word. Look at the word. Mm. According to Jesus. According to Jesus. Not according to John. 1 Corinthians 2 and 12 says, Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God. That we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Mm -hmm. How many of us turn away from a free will? Come on now. Come on. Amen. <laughs> Come on. First John 5 and 4 says, For everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world. Yes. And this is the victory that has overcome the world. Yes, our faith. Yeah, faith. Amen. Amen. That's our foundation. Mm -hmm. Your faith. Right. It's not your words. Mm -hmm. No, it's not your mistakes. No, it's not your deeds. No. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, 1 Corinthians 2 and 12, but the spirit which is of God. Remember that now. Yes. It was freely given. Yes. John 6 and 44 says, No man can come to the Father. Except. <gasps> Except. He has sent me to draw you to him. And I will raise him up in the last days. Just before we go to Romans 8, because to be honest, we look back at some of our lives and some of our decisions and we say, I don't deserve this. Amen. And I don't deserve that. I've been wrong, and I, I know I'm not right, and, and I don't see how God could ever even decide to use me. Amen. Amen. But then the word speaks to us so profound. In Romans 8 and 34, 38, he said, For I am persuaded that neither death nor life 
Yeah, nor angels, mm -hmm. nor principalities, Power. nor powers, Being nor present. things present, nor things to come, nor height, yeah. nor depth, nor any creature yeah. shall be able to separate yeah. me. Mm -hmm. oh, Thank you. Hallelujah. Shall separate me from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. I thank God for Jesus. Ooh, thank God. I thank God for thank Jesus. You, but now hold it before you Ooh, choose. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Cause you gotta make a decision. Oh, yeah. Either for the flesh or the spirit. I'm not finished. I want to go back in Romans uh -huh. eight. Stay uh -huh. right there. And 29, uh -huh. he says, for whom he did foreknow. I know us, I know us. We still don't see it yet. We still don't see that our errors didn't stop us from being one of the children of God. Our errors didn't stop us from being able to do what God has called us to do. But 8 and 29 said, for whom he did foreknow. He also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. Why? That he might be the firstborn among many brothers. Moreover, whom he did predestine, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. Now, 31 is what God woke me up to 20 some years ago and said, What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against you? Choose ye this day. Choose ye this day whom you going to serve. Am I going to serve the flesh or am I going to draw to the spirit of God that has been radiant in my life even when I didn't see it, when I didn't know it, when I didn't understand it, it sought and fought for me. Yeah. It sought for a better life than for yeah. the enemies that was fighting against me. Still got it. Still got it. And I praise God praise. in my ignorance, yeah. in my foolishness. He watches out. Yes. Yes. Yeah. He watches out for me. Uh -huh. In the middle of my best, he shows up and tells me my best. Right. In the middle of my struggle, he shows up and run wrestles. Yeah. Hallelujah. Uh, Hallelujah. Uh, Hallelujah. Uh, Hallelujah. Uh, Hallelujah. Uh, Hallelujah. When my mouth is popped against me, yeah. my heart is being poured by a spirit on the inside of yeah. me that tells me life is much better than what it is. That I'm looking at life has a whole lot for me than what it is that I'm holding on to.